me hard shouldn't be so mean. And it's mean to say that I would lose someone I love. Oh! I did not lose them! Hank? <laughs> Hank? Hank? Hans. No, not Hans. I'm looking for Hank. Hans. Hank with a K. Hank. Hands. Hands? Oh, hands! Ah! In many complex ecosystems, organisms participate in symbiotic relationships to cooperate with others or hunt them in order to survive. For an ecosystem is, that is as diverse as the intertidal zone between oceans and the rusky shore. It is a given that the organisms in this ecosystem will have unique relationships with each other. Let's begin with a simple one, sea urchins and chitons. They share a commensalistic relationship, which means that one of the two organisms is benefited by the relationship, while the other is unaffected. Urchins provide habitat for chitons, as the foot of the chiton binds to the urchin. The spines of the urchins can help protect the chiton from predators. The urchins are unaffected by the relationship, but provide a helpful environment for the chitons. Next up is a mutualistic relationship of sea anemone and algae. This means that both organisms are aided by the relationship between them. Anemone provide safe habitat for algae and helps expose the algae to sunlight. Algae provides sugar and oxygen to anemone through photosynthesis. The two organisms rely on each other in order to survive. One of the most well-known is the commensalistic relationship between hermit crabs and snails. Hermit crabs use abandoned snail shells as their homes. The hermit crabs rely on these shells in order to obtain new homes if their shells are damaged. The snails are pretty much unaffected by this relationship, but their abandoned shells are necessities for the hermit crabs. In case of ocean acidic acidification and global warming, on one hand, as the snail population size decreases, the hermit crab exhibit difficulties finding shells to live in. On the other hand, ocean acidification also makes snail shells thinner, which also likely affects hermit crab populations. Another interesting symbiotic relationship is the mutualistic one between the decorator crab and sponges. Decorator crabs snip bits of sponges to cover its shell as camouflage. Crabs feed on algae around the sponge. The sponge benefits from being exposed to more feeding opportunities caused by the crab's movement. The sponge continues to live by filter feeding, even after it has been snipped. 
Our last example is between crabs and barnacles. Barnacles in family Balanidae grow on shells of crabs, which is commensalism, and they are lost when the crab molts. Stalked barnacles, which are mainly in the genus Octolasmus of the family Lepidae, often grow on the shells and gills of crabs. They are not parasites, as the barnacles on the shells are lost when the crab molts. And the barnacles on the gills are only making use of the respiratory currents to bring in planktonic food. Why is understanding symbiotic relationships important? Rising temperatures due to climate change can hurt certain species more directly than others in the intertidal zone. The failing to understand the relationships between them will make the damage in ecosystems look less problematic than it actually is. Decimating one species can cause great losses for the other species involved in the symbiotic relationship. For example, warming waters has killed has killed a large percentage of sea urchins, which affect chitin populations. Along with this. Combinations of ocean acidification and sea surface temperature increase result in significant decrease in barnacle population, or some might even die out. With the in-depth understanding of relationships between species, we can help prevent adverse consequences caused by alter altering ecosystems. Cascade effects. Small pools 
of water it's a big biome typhoon So important, yeah. Local water mostly exist at low tide. So important, home to symbiosis, intertidal zone, tide pools, shallow pools of seawater. Bye.